evening and welcome once again to Gaming Under the Influence. I'm Mike here with Alex, coming to you from Green Dragon CVR in Woodbridge, Ontario, to talk to you guys again about video games. How's it going, man? Yeah, it's going pretty good, man. How about you? I'm well. I am well. Yes. Having a fine week. Not really playing that much games. I'm a little bit burnt out in certain kinds of things, to be honest with you. How are you feeling lately? Oh, I've been, like, I don't even know how to s explain it, but I've been all over the place and I've been feeling so weird about a lot of things, like, just struggling with what to play so i kind of have just been noodling in different things like i booted up scarlet nexus the other day and tales of Arise. i was like i gotta finish one of these jrpgs this is ridiculous and then like i don't know certain things about each one kind of yeah. bugged me enough that i just fell back into final fantasy 3 i recently did the same that and with then both started games. four yeah like it's i mean i love jrpgs we've talked about that extensively but there's yeah, just too. Once in a while, you know, I don't know. You just can't get through them. Cheers. Maybe it's... I find that you know, in a, both of like, those games, actually, maybe you'll agree with this. I'm at the point where it's just demanded of you that you... Yeah, that's good shit, eh? We're yes, drinking this fucking uh, Collective Arts brewed iced tea. I don't know. It's like a fucking... Uh, it's like an iced tea, they eh? With malt in it. It's yeah, quite it's good. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Very nice. Um, you find that there's a point, especially as you approach the end game, where... You know, as the story approaches its climax, for some reason they just demand of you that you slog through these like gameplay gauntlets of mm -hmm. like too many enemies, too long hallways, yeah. and you're just seeing shit you already saw fifty thousand times. Especially Scarlet Nexus, yep. the bosses yep. are repeated yep. Yep. stuff that was once a boss. Now you're just fighting as a trash mob like six times in the uh -huh. same level, and you're just fucking tired of it, man. Yeah, I like the world, I like being there, but I don't want to just repeat this rogue shit. It's just there for the sake of it. It's performative. Yep, let yep. it go, man. You know, there, there's a lot. I, I don't know if something's wrong with me lately, but everything I'm playing, I'm like, you know what? I wish that this was a walking simulator. You know, <laughs> I just wish it didn't Stripped have down, gameplay. Yeah. Like, it's just because most of the time, the stuff you do in a game is fucking horseshit, man. I feel like maybe it's that's dumb. why I'm so attracted to the turn base. Yeah, of the older me like too. I still play the newer Final Fantasies that have action combat, like seven and whatever else. But you go purely symbolic. But I also like just the turn base for that reason yeah. specifically too, right? It's not like just slogging through like button presses. Sometimes it could be, I guess, though. Combat. Yeah. And they make you grind, I, like Bravely 2 could get that way, but I see the true. point you're trying to make, right? I like, did have to grind a bit in 3, which annoyed me, but... It nice doesn't it doesn't it. have the same repetitive nature, at least on the side of your input, right? That, yeah. You know? I, I feel anyways, like, you know, playing these games, that they should have pared back some of that stuff and gone more like... that. That's why I feel like, you know, the best route is either to go purely abstract, symbolic, be like a JRPG or like a walking simulator on the one hand, mm -hmm. you know, where you're not really trying to make it so that the player's inputs are perfectly replicated on the side of the game, right? There's yeah. more of a disconnect. Or yeah. you make it like Souls, where you're totally involved and you don't have that... You're never sitting there thinking, fuck, this is boring. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, you're, you're fucking just, you're, right in there. You yeah. got that flow oh, yeah. state going, right? You're, you're immersed entirely. You're yep. intentionally yep. involved in the game, right? So that's I true. find playing games like that, like that doesn't happen. And I'm just sitting there like, Ugh, I just don't care about what I'm doing. I'm just going through the motions, you know? Yeah, I feel like I stopped playing each one for different reasons. Like, uh, Scarlet Nexus was getting annoying with uh, some of the bosses, and I felt underleveled. And I'm like, I'm not grinding in this game, and I don't know what to do otherwise. Like, so I was kind of just like, eh. Yeah. Um, and then what Tails is just like a slog like uh, it's just such a long game that i i i was stuck at i think i was at one of the bosses i beat that boss and then like carried on to the next zone where i guess you would go through again and it just mm -hmm. seemed like starting off so slow and i was like i just i don't know i, I just you. didn't have the patience for it but anyway yeah it's i feel just, that it's too much right just there is like, a bit ah. too much and on top of that maybe you'll agree with this too i feel like playing the bandai namco in-house stuff especially mm -hmm. like they're quality well-crafted games you know oh yeah i like the worlds and the stories but i feel like they don't have the fucking tightness and the vision that something like a FromSoft game or a fucking kojima game has yeah like control you know where like those games man like i remember when i'm playing them they become practically like a way of life for a little while you mm -hmm. know you're totally immersed in them or cyberpunk you know mm -hmm. when i played that like or even valheim still like it just feels like it you know you buy it man you're in you know what I mean? You're fucking yeah. sold. You don't have that period where you're like, ah, it's never like the that. The Bandai Namco JRPGs are really good, and they usually have, like, really good the quality, ideas well -crafted. and very nice art. Like, everything's beautiful, yeah. but yeah, it does feel like they have that, yeah. There's too much gameplay, maybe, and just, just a little bit too much little, going on. Little, a little too, bit little too long. Yeah, yeah. Not not enough yeah. to support it throughout Conceptual the whole way. Yeah. yeah, Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like, too, that a great thing with Final Fantasy I always found is that, you know, 
how do you put this? It's full of stupid fantasy shit, of course, you know? Like most fantasy stuff is. But the fantasy tropes, you know, they have like, it's the way that when you read, you know, like a mythical fucking text, like the Bible or like the Odyssey or some shit like this, yeah. or Dante's Inferno, and they're talking about fire or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. Or like in Dark Souls, they, they use these simple and universal yeah. symbols. To that carries things, so much right? fucking weight. It's obviously fucking metaphorical. Yeah. But it's exactly that, metaphorical. Mm -hmm. It's not like they're putting this, like, hyper-particular thing there that mm -hmm. they expect you to take seriously apart from all of its ramifications outside of the text, right? True. Whereas if you play one of these Bandai Namco games, it feels like when you're reading a young adult novel. They're, like, making up all this shit and proper names, but, yeah, like, there's what a lot is any of them? What do they mean? I don't know. Yeah. They're not really... Oh, they're yeah. just a bunch of particular things. It's like an alphabet soup, right? Yeah. It's not like yeah, any yeah. particular thing is rich or stands out to you. It's It's there. You know, it's got some meaning, I guess, but it's not like, you know, you fucking, you play Bloodborne or you fucking the Souls games, man. Like, that is literally akin to, like, you know, in the fucking Bible where Moses sees the burning bush. Mm -hmm. It has that kind of conceptual clarity to it. There's a universality to the imagery where you see it. And yes, you see all of world literature kind of refracted in it in some sense. It's not like just this, you know, like Harry Potter, like Wingardium. Fuck, no, man. It's not like they're making yeah. up a particular, right? They're, they're reaching into, like, our collective fucking understanding of things bigger than ourselves. Whereas I feel like the Bandai Namco games are firmly lodged at that level of, like, Harry Potter, YA, like, you know, making up proper names. And it's yeah, fine, it's yeah. good, but it's, yeah. it doesn't get to that point of, like, Final Fantasy or Souls where they're, like, to me, it seems, like, very clearly they're engaged with some, like, you know, more hefty subject matter. Right? Yeah, exactly. I played Stardew Valley, and I feel like that has this same, like... The same kind of... It has of, the yeah. same kind of, like, man, you know what I mean? The idea is so fucking crystal clear, you're... You, it, its intelligibility immediately grabs you. Like it's like you just see its whole logic immediately, and you. Yeah, buy, it feels like you know? when you turn on, you literally immerse yourself into yeah, another sure. world, and like you totally forget. And tr it's not like it's it's hard to put into words like f literally what you're feeling. Like, but it, it is that essentially uh, uh, that yeah, you man. can totally like lose your sense of self and just suspend into fucking. I think so. Belief of the game. I like, think it has a lot know? to do with like maybe it doesn't directly deal like with Dark Souls with like oh the fire or the creation of the universe and all this mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, it deals with fucking fundamental aspects of the like you know potency and act like the interaction of different substances and their orderly arrangement and fucking yeah. this fundamental human fantasy to escape like fucking capitalism in the office and go back yeah. to some fucking more primal and ordered state of being right like yeah, that's what yeah, this game yeah. is about it has that same fucking universal conceptual ambition that's why you're playing it and it's like yeah you're just dicking around there but it feels like you know so good right you're yeah. part of something huge you know even though you're just doing this stupid thing a game doing made by the, one yeah, guy exactly. right yeah Whereas yeah, that's fair these enough. games are bigger, they cost more, but nonetheless, they seem like, you know, like, you're always like, what is it, it's, it sounds like, it's not like, you know, in the sense that you want to see yourself in the fucking thing, but you're just like, what is the relevance of this to anything outside of its raw self, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. It feels like you're only capable of appreciating the characters and the story and the setting on their own terms, and it's not like you can take anything from it, right? It's not like it has any, you know? Uh, and that's not necessarily bad, but it, it's not... It's not just it's just not a masterpiece like these other things we're talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. There's a, to me, there's right? a distinction there, and that's part of the reason I've been wanting to play through all the Final Fantasy so much. Don't know what to play. Just like ah, I'll just keep going in Final Fantasy three or four or whatever, right? So I'm happy we have that because the it, there's not a lot going on in the fucking industry right now. Like there's not a lot of games coming out. Actually, no. funny enough, Final Fantasy the Crisis Core remake from the PSP game. Uh, is coming out at the end of the year, which I'm excited for that. And other than that, there's really like Pokemon games, which I'm yeah. That's that's that was going to be the subject for this video. Uh, right? Yeah, that was what we originally the the franchise funk. Into. How it's possible to get just exhausted by the the the, the extension of a franchise? Yeah, native, right. I feel like I'm finally there, but there's like a lot of layers to it because like I've always been excited for every new Pokemon game since I remember going back for a decade. Oh almost, god, as long as we know yeah. each other. But, I don't know, for the first time, I feel like I still am going to buy them and maybe give it a chance, but I'm not as enthusiastic as I would normally, like, otherwise yeah. be, and I feel like there's for, there's, there's a bunch of reasons. One being stale, and we can get into that, but also doing different things that kind of take away from the simple, like, you know, core of what Pokemon is, like, it's it's gone through too many iterations, and it's... It, you know what I mean? You sort of lose the point there, and it just becomes like Halo or whatever the fuck have you been. Yeah. I mean, I hope not. I hope I still enjoy them. But, 
for the first time, I have to say, like, I'm just, I don't have that same, you know, excitement for it, that same thrill to be like, ooh, the new Pokemons, like, ah, new starters, new region, uh, new just... Pokemons. It's what part of it, too, is because, uh, remember the one that came out, was it this year or last RCS year? RCS Legend? Was, or yeah, RCS Legend. Was that this year? I think, I it, think was. it was in January of this yeah. year. But I, I really liked that game, and it was like a totally new direction. Like, things, it was like, taking Pokemon and making a like a, almost like a whole fucking new thing out of it like I don't know how to explain it it was just it was so such a departure from the main series but I felt like it was an improvement in a lot of ways and I really liked it thing is now they're going to implement a lot of the gameplay changes from that game into these new games I think like that um, they sort of removed the like random well, okay, random battles and also going into battle being, like, a different... You know, like, you get into a battle in Pokemon and then it goes to the battle screen and you don't move or anything, you just select your attacks. They integrate it into just controlling your character on the overworld. So you just throw your Pokemon out hmm. and it's there, the fucking attacks come up. You can still walk around with your character and shit. Yeah, yeah. And you physically can run away from battles. Like it, cool. it's it's kind of cool that they I like that they modernized it in that sense. So I'm excited to see stuff like that get introduced and see like uh, it doesn't look know. like it's here though, does it? In this, I think it will be. It will be. I think. Interesting. And then same way how you uh, you basically just like whip out your Pokemon, like you select them and then hit a button to. <laughs> Throw them right, you just yeah. throw them out. Whip out that Pokemon. You whip out that fucking uh, Sudowoodo. On Sudo screen there, Sudo yeah, that's hilarious. But uh, yeah, aside from that, it, you know, the new Pokemon games have their fucking uh, flagship, uh, whatever it's called, yeah. their gimmick, which is instead of like a Mega Evolution or like a Dynamax, whatever, all the stupid things they introduce and then f never have ever again. Um, the, this is crystallizing your Pokemon crystallize and it'll change type so if you're at a disadvantage like if you're a fire type and there's a water type you can use crystallize your Pokemon to a different type and try and get the upper hand it's just I mean, like this gen's kind of gimmick to like change the battle system a little yeah. bit and then I don't know I don't know man I feel like you know at the end of the day like I don't even think they're gonna be bad I just I'm not as excited yeah, as I that's fucking right. you know like wouldn't the problem... We probably talked about this so many ways so before. Much. Like how... So much. Yeah, the, you know, how the extension of something, you know, in terms of its matter, when its concept is fucking diminished, it's just, you know, it's like an obese body, right? And yeah. I feel like at one point, like, you know, unless you're diversifying the thing specifically, like, unless you're making it into something else at some point, and this is the reason why games like Final Fantasy, I think, have this... We're not really referring to one thing. You know? Yeah. Even if there are mechanical and uh, aesthetic elements that overlap, they're all very different games, right? Yeah. They're Essentially all, different games. They could be called They're all pretty much from scratch. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're in the same series and they share a lot of similarities, but at the same time... It's a mechanical it's, it's, category more than it is a fucking... How, it, it's yeah. almost like, you know, yeah, it's a mechanical, mechanical category. Mechanical exactly. aesthetic Otherwise, category. it's yeah. like they're like new IPs every different time. Different concepts. New fucking... Uh, yeah. That's new, right. Like, just new everything, right? We've seen so. FromSoft do this with their formula. Yep with their different series as well you yep. know of which now they've made four or so you know, yeah true yeah very different in certain ways even though they have similar matter and they overlap um i think that that's the secret to i don't know the extension of a, a studio or an idea beyond uh, its initial entry beyond right or it's a yeah, couple exactly. of successful ones i'm like when you have something that you know you add these mechanical elements that you know are supposedly changing up the game that are even less significant than the difference between final fantasies yet you don't change the idea mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and after a while what can happen it's except the very, thing is just like a, an obese body you know you know yeah. in, the, in fucking lord of the rings where he's like it's like butter scraped over too much bread no now it's like too much fat over too little skeleton you know what i mean <laughs> yeah it's just like fucking funk yeah Your like, organs are collapsing like that's that, that's what we got here i think pretty much like uh, i i i don't know i hope i'm just like kind of being sensationalist and like i hope that i do enjoy these games but i just don't feel the same yeah. sense of excitement and wonder and you know like i'm i think that's probably you know even if it does work out as a game you're probably remarking that the thing is too similar on the side of the idea how could you yeah. still have the same excitement for it right yeah it's just the same thing you already know it inside out that, that's 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 probably true that's yeah. you're gonna sit there for 40 hours doing the same more or less thing it's like yeah yeah 
I played a bunch of these too, but I gave up a little bit before you, I think. Yeah. I played most of them. I've beaten most of them. I, I gave up fucking... before the Switch ones. Yeah. Or maybe the first Switch one I played. I don't remember anymore, honestly. Mm. So Switch there's... ones were... I mean, this is part of the problem too, right? The Switch ones were okay, but they didn't... They didn't do it for me in the yeah. sense like yeah, uh, remember, the Let's yeah. Go games and then Sword and Shield. It wasn't until Arceus Legends came out that yeah, I, like, I was actually yeah. really stoked on that game. Yeah. Like I would fucking play that again. Yeah, sick game. So I'm hoping maybe some of the stuff that they implement from those games make this feel like fresh and kind of exciting. But yeah, maybe it'll surprise me. Maybe it's better to go in kind of subdued a bit instead of like ah Pokemon. That's true. Blah. Definitely Bull is. Jack face. What's that thing? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Soy Jack there. Yeah. But. No, it's definitely better to not be too excited about something, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, fuck. I don't know. I feel like even if it ends up being good, this is still a persistent problem with the way that we make things into franchises these days. Yeah. And just like milk them to death. Yeah, man. You know, I, I don't think that. But we don't. You know, I don't have the same feeling for Final Fantasy. Yeah, probably because then things. you know they want to make their their cash cow, but they specifically diversify it, so it's different things, and that's yeah. why it has the sense of being legitimately different in each entry, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I think that that's you know, and it's strange even talking in these terms. Like, why must the thing go on? And everybody just knows the answer is to make a shit pile of money, and like, shouldn't we at some mm-hmm. point question that? You know, make something new, boys. Right. Imagine if the Pokemon devs thought of something new. They did. Nobody what? liked it. It was a little town hero. Really? Yeah. There you go. Switch game. You probably have it here. I probably have it. Yeah. <laughs> you do have it. You sure? <laughs> I should play that. Yeah. yeah. Um, it had mixed uh, reception. Yeah. I never played it. Never bought it. No. Um, no but shame. you know what? Maybe it's time to go in and see what Maybe, yeah. Game Freak is cooking up outside of Pokemon. They probably had to fight tooth and nail to even, like, dedicate a small team to even get this off the whatever little game it was. It was like, how does Pokemon allow Game Freak to do that, right? You know what I mean? It's, it's funny because it would almost seem like never it would never happen. But it did. It did happen. And it was only a couple of years ago. Oh, well. Yeah, that's kind of where we're at anyway with the, the Pokemans. I'd like to see going forward, like, not that it'll ever happen, not that I expect it to, but it would be great if, you know, we saw, like, back in the PS2 days, before, I think, information technology made it possible for people to copy each other so much, Mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. a more, you know, more of a focus on original IPs, obviously, yeah, less of a focus on pre-existing genre norms and tropes, you know? Yeah, I mean, we still are getting, like, new IPs and original things coming down the pipeline, like, it's just... Seems like there's so much garbage and so much regurgitation now that you're almost like sifting through shit yeah. just to get to like, ooh, a new IP. Maybe the best thing would be is if there was no Jesus. such thing as intellectual property and everybody can make everything, you know? That's an interesting concept. <laughs> For just my part, I don't believe in everything. Explode everything. Yeah. You know, the highest honor somebody could do me is taking something I've made without paying for it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> something i've written or produced that would be excellent wouldn't you be flattered great take it i mean yeah i guess I want money go ahead in some in one sense yes 100 yeah. percent um i mean something digital you know yeah intellectual yeah. property i'm not saying some fucking thing i pulled out of the coal mine obviously but no, something no. that right something of course, replicable of course. infinitely an idea something you, right like, like yeah. a character a fucking yeah imagine back in the day a man wrote a song and and you told him and he told you, now nobody else can ever hear that without paying me for it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear my song? All right. Yeah, pay up. People paid, were paid to perform, surely. Yeah, That's a human yeah. effort. But yes, to just, yeah. you know, to hear something you already performed once? No, mm-hmm. come on. Shut That's the fuck up. Hilarious. Shut up. That's like usury, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're not making anything, right? So I think perhaps that would be a way out of this funk, you know? I think in other parts of the world they have this <clears throat> disdain for uh, intellectual property, too. I was reading about how Maybe. in China there's, like, this whole, like, genre of just literature that copies other literature. Just people infinitely and ceaselessly copy each other. Nobody cares. Really? About it. Yeah. It's almost like open imitation source. Shit. Yeah. But sometimes <laughs> the imitation is cooler or better. You know? Yeah. Yeah. New shit is born, right? That so, will never happen, but. No, no, it'll never happen because we're fucking greasy. Yeah. Yeah. What, you know, it's an interesting have to get idea, into that, though. But yeah, it would be great. Like, because then probably, you know, rings of power wouldn't be so bad because there'd be some fucking guy in his basement making a good Tolkien series. Right? True. Yeah. It'd probably be better looking than the Amazon one, too. <laughs> yeah. Man, this is tangential, but uh, I was reading some of that fucking, you know, 
some of the interviews by the uh, between the guys who wrote the Amazon series and uh, you know people at some stupid LA magazine I guess and uh-huh. you should see the things these people say it perfectly illustrates the kinds of like reasons people would become tired of a, of an intellectual property anyways you know I think we've made the point fairly clear right like yeah uh, this was with uh, what we were talking about a little bit earlier too but I think with Final Fantasy it came to the fore and you know hopefully if there's the extension of an idea into a franchise the idea is diversified in each entry not just mechanically yep or rather even if the mechanics are the same, it should yeah, be diversified the are same. ideally in every entry, yeah. right? That's what yeah. I'm trying to communicate here, you know? Yeah, because at the end of the day, the mechanics are the mechanics, like souls, like turn-based combat, yeah. and final It's Pass, like letters like in the alphabet. Uh, exactly. You know? Everybody yeah. writes a book, doesn't make up a new fucking alphabet, new yeah. language. Nobody wants them to, right? But mm-hmm. you should communicate something new, right? Yeah. With that fucking alphabet, so With to that speak. framework, yeah. with that, uh, you know, template. made this analogy that, like, genres are kind of like languages or alphabets or systems of communication, right? And yeah. with that genre, it's your job as the fucking guy writing in that genre, so to speak speak to write something new no yeah and final fantasy is just a more refined specific version of that it's like a genre it's like a yeah. more yeah. tight genre yeah. kind of sub genre yeah. exactly. perhaps yeah. exactly yeah. that's why it works in this proliferating fucking 20 entry fucking style right i love that final other fantasy. stuff doesn't perhaps oh, even man. tales though tales is like that too to yeah be that's yeah. true even maybe so uh many. maybe dragon quest like it, it yeah, but again it seems to yeah. be a more common yeah. thing in the uh yeah I guess in and the it, Japanese space. It was space. how fucking Bioware and such studios developed their games too for a mm-hmm. while, right? Mm-hmm. And Spider still did Greedfall and yeah. fucking uh, Steel Rising, so I don't know. And uh, Xenoblade is like this as well, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yep. Yeah. Fire yeah. Emblem is like this still. There you go. Yeah. 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 All the Japanese it's a Japanese games. franchise yeah. thing, yeah. Anyways, thank you very much on that. Like, let's look forward altogether to specifically diversified genre entries. <laughs> yes. Thank you guys. Tune in next week.